Hello, my name is Kunal, and I'm going to be talking about uh, accelerating distributed optimization uh, via fixed time convergence flows. And this is a col uh, collaborative work with Dr. Mayank Barenwal. So let me start by talking on why we care about accelerating the distributed optimization. So distributed optimization has raised a lot of applications. First, when we talk about large-scale machine learning uh, problems, we want uh, to solve those machine learning problems uh, quickly, and so it's beneficial to distribute the data sets or the uh, learning method itself uh, at different nodes where we can compute the gradients at different nodes and uh, accelerate the overall learning. And other uh, side, when we have problems as, such as economic dispatch, where not uh, if, when it's generally not possible to share all the data, uh, like the individual constraints or uh, the data production uh, with the global uh, entities, then it is necessary that uh, optimization is performed in a distributed manner. And why we care about acceleration of these problems, or rather the solution methods is, uh, we would like to get the solutions as fast as possible, particularly when the set point is changing, such as an economic dispatch, when a grid node fails, or when the demand changes, we would like to c compute the optimal distribution as fast as possible so that uh, the distribution can be optimal at all times. Large-scale optimization algorithms uh, solve these large-scale optimization problems in uh, two different manners. One, where the gradient is computed at different nodes where the central parameter on which the gradient needs to be computed is still gets transmitted to each individual node and the gradient is computed in a distributed manner and retransmitted to the central node where uh, the parameter estimate is uh, put forward. On the other hand, in a ring all reduced kind of a framework, not the whole uh, uh, state of the current parameter is shared with each individual node at each uh, iteration, but a portion of it is shared, but uh, it, it gets shared with all the nodes uh, in the sequence. And so eventually, uh, while the, com the bandwidth cost of the first approach is linear in the number of nodes, the latency cost in the second approach is linear in the number of nodes. And uh, all in all, the communication cost for both these approaches, it still turns out to be linear in the number of nodes. Now to address this issue, uh, distributed stochastic gradient descent based methods were uh, developed where uh, the communication overhead was reduced to just uh, proportional to the degree of the underlying topology instead of the number of nodes, which could be in general very, very low when the graph topology is sparse. But one issue with distributed stochastic gradient descent methods is there's an extra overhead uh, in, uh, in convergence coming due to the topology uh, parameters, uh, particularly this parameter rho, which is, dependent, which is dependent on the eigenvalues of the underlying graph topology. And so what we really need is redesigning the algorithm itself so that we can reduce both the communication overhead as well as the computational overhead. And before introducing our algorithm, uh, we would like to give you motivation that came from just a simple uh, unconstrained convex optimization. So un uh, un uh, unconstrained convex optimization problem is uh, given here where if we assume that F is convex and it's differentiable, then we can write down the gradient descent uh, method and it's continuous time equivalent the gradient flow method. The idea is, uh, under certain assumptions, particularly strong convexity and certain relaxation of strong convexity, it, it can be shown that the equilibrium point, which is actually the optimal solution of this problem, is actually exponentially stable for uh, the gradient flow. Now, why do we care about continuous time dynamics? It is because it is uh, very easy to understand the behavior of the dynamical systems in the continuous time framework. And when uh, we discretize them, we can do iterative implementation of those algorithms. And there has been a lot of analysis on uh, how the convergence behavior that is studied in the continuous time framework remains same or the, uh, is preserved in the discrete time uh, 
approximation as well. So, uh, because we have been talking about this exponential stability and fixed and stability, let me quickly introduce these different notions of stability. So we all know uh, Lyapunov stability is if we start closer to the equilibrium point, we do not go very far away from the equilibrium point. Asymptotically stable uh, equilibrium point is where the trajectories converge to the equilibrium point uh, as time tends to infinity. Exponential stability is slightly stronger where there is an exponential rate of convergence. And finally, the notion that we are most interested in is this fixed time stability notion where not only the uh, trajectories converge exactly to the equilibrium point, but they do so within a given fixed amount of time. So we don't have to wait till the time to go to infinity for the convergence to happen. Um, so what we uh, do here is we use Lyapunov theory uh, to assess the stability of the continuous time dynamical system that we are going to develop for solving this distributed optimization methods. In particular, uh, there is a notion of uh, Lyapunov condition for fixed time stability. So if we consider this general uh, autonomous differential equation where uh, without loss of generality, consider it, uh, the origin to be the equilibrium point, we say that uh, the equilibrium point is fixed time stable if, if it is Lyapunov stable and if there exists a fixed time T bar independent of where the system trajectory start, such that the system trajectory is reached the equilibrium point within this amount of time. Now the Lyapunov conditions for assessing whether an equilibrium point is fixed time stable or not are given here. So this was introduced back in 2012 uh, by the paper mentioned below, where the idea is that if we can find the positive definite continuously differentiable function which satisfies this uh, inequality with two parameters, gamma one and gamma two, which are the most important parameters to note here, in this equation, where particularly the most important thing to note is that one of the parameters should be between zero and one, and the other parameter should be greater than one. Under this condition, it it it, it is shown that the, the trajectories are going to converge to the equilibrium point within this fixed amount of time, which is only dependent on the parameters here and not the initial conditions. So this is a very strong result, and we'll see how we can use this in solving the distributed optimization problem. All right, so uh, the idea is um, there are different kind of accelerated uh, optimization uh, methods, particularly if we started just a plain gradient descent, we can talk about momentum-based uh, gradient descent or accelerated gradient descent or Newton, uh, Newton's acceleration or even Nestor's acceleration. In all of these cases, uh, what happens is we only accelerate uh, the rate of convergence in the sense that we say that instead of linear convergence, we can have quadratic or a cubic convergence, but still uh, the convergence happens as k, the number of iteration goes to infinity. Uh, and the, strong, uh, the standard assumptions for guaranteeing these accelerated convergence are uh, strong convexity of the underlying uh, objective function and that its gradient is also Lipschitz continuous. In, in this work, we actually relax this assumption uh, of particularly of strong convexity and we consider functions that are even invex and we quantify this invexity in a per, through a particular inequality called as PL inequality, which is a relaxation of strong convexity. So PL inequality is basically uh, uh, a relaxation of con strong convexity where each strong convex function also satisfies PL inequality, but there are certain functions that only satisfy PL, uh, satisfy PL inequality but are not strongly convex. So this is uh, how we define PL, uh, satisfaction of PL inequality. In particular, if the gradient uh, and the function itself has this kind of a relation for some uh, modulus mu, then we say that the function has satisfies PL inequality. And as I was mentioning before, PL inequality is a generalization of strong convexity. In particular, uh, the least square estimation problem having this kind of a function, if we define f of x as the norm of ax minus b squared, then if a is full rank, uh, only uh, in that particular condition, function s is, is strongly convex, but for any uh, arbitrary matrix A, whether it's full rank or not, this function always satisfies PL inequality. So our proposed mechanism to solving the distributed optimization problem is uh, having a fixed time convergence at 
different levels. So first we want to uh, estimate the parameters within a fixed amount of time. And by parameter, I, mean, I, I, would, I would explain what we mean by that. Then uh, we want to get consensus on uh, these parameters throughout the network within a fixed amount of time. And then once we have uh, all the information uh, available at each node, uh, we can use a centralized framework where each node moves uh, their parameter or basically uh, evolves their parameters uh, in a particular manner such that they reach the solution within a fixed amount of time. All right, so the centralized framework to solving the uh, distributed optimization problem would look something like this. So we would want our trajectories of each individual node to flow again uh, uh, along this particular uh, gradient, which is essentially the gradient of the combined objective function. But the problem is, uh, in a completely centralized manner, we would first need to estimate uh, the gradient of the uh, of the objective of the central objective function, or put uh, it another way, the sum of the gradients of the individual uh, objective functions. So, so this is this is the parameter that we need to estimate first in a distributed manner. Uh, and uh, just uh, giving a proof of why, if we choose this uh, particular method, it will be correct. Uh, we can do this kind of a Lyapunov analysis where if we choose this function to be the Lyapunov function, then we can show that the Lyapunov conditions uh, that were presented earlier for fixed time stability are satisfied, and so uh, the resulting trajectories would have a fixed time convergence behavior. All right, so first I uh, will talk about how to uh, get the estimate of the parameter at each node uh, within a fixed amount of time. So here we would want our, our thetas to converge to the gradient of the global objective function. And for that, we define this dynamics for the theta parameter, which is just uh, a local parameter, but it would get uh, it, it would reach to the global information uh, through this fixed time uh, consensus method. And the important thing to note here is that we only need to share information uh, with neighbors. And so under the assumption that the graph topology is connected, uh, it can be shown that uh, all these uh, GI functions would reach consensus. And so all the theta is would be same and they would reach to the, uh, they, they, would, they would basically have the global information, which is the gradient of the global objective function. Now we also need our, our individual XIs, which is the uh, individual estimate of the solution of the uh, global objective function to be same at each node. So we again uh, use a consensus-based method which converges within a fixed amount of time. And again, under similar assumptions of connectivity and uh, uh, some uh, parameters being large, we can show that this particular algorithm would lead to convergence uh, of uh, this error between the uh, values xi and xj's to zero within a fixed amount of time. So now that all the xi's have converged to the same value and all the theta's have converged to the same value, now all that is needed is basically them to flow along the similar dynamics so that they can reach the optimal solution. So this is uh, the discretized algorithm that we propose where we get the individual control laws of, uh, from the, using the information from the neighbors. We update the theta is, GIs and XIs, everything in distributed manner, and the final convergence happened within the sum of those three fixed times uh, which are required for the individual convergence of those three individual uh, dynamical systems to their respective equilibrium points. Now to provide uh, a basic analysis on why this would this method would also work when discretized, because if we want to solve an optimization problem, we would need to discretize it so that we can use an iterative method. Uh, we showed uh, in our paper that uh, if we use uh, a simple Euler discretization method, then uh, the trajectory of the discretized uh, system as well as that, and, and the trajectory of the uh, continuous dynamical system, they remain close. In particular, uh, this is the bound that we obtained. And what is important to note is 
that after a fixed number of iteration, the error between two goes smaller than epsilon for any arbitrarily chosen epsilon. And what the result says here is that for any epsilon that is desirable uh, as the error between the discretized and continuous time dynamics, there always exists a discretization step delta t star, such that if we choose our, our time step to be smaller than that, then the trajectory converges, or the error between the discrete and the continuous time trajectory uh, remains smaller than this uh, error epsilon. So now we show some results of our proposed method. On the left, uh, we show the performance of our proposed method on solving a linear regression problem in a distributed manner, where we can see that uh, the all the a agents, which basically denote the nodes, they their values converge to the optimal solution within a fixed number of epochs. Uh, on the right, we show the performance of the proposed method on uh, solving uh, the characterization of handwritten digits on MNIST data set, which consists of where the uh, neural network consists of 5 million parameters. And on the top plot, we can see that the test accuracy of the trained neural net uh, trained using our method is just as good as distributed stochastic gradient descent, while the bottom plot shows that the training time taken by our method is much smaller because the uh, consensus on errors reaches value zero within much smaller number of epochs as compared to distributed stochastic gradient descent. So in conclusion, uh, we propose a distributed fixed time optimization scheme for solving large scale optimization problems. We showed that uh, our algorithm can uh, perform much faster than the state of the art methods and that the convergence uh, remains uh, same even upon simple discretization as Euler discretization. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take any more questions.